Welcome to Coding Catch Up. My name is Jamie Jones, and today we've been talking about Bootstrap 4, which has finally been released. So, what is Bootstrap? You may have not heard of it in the past. So, if you're fairly new to uh, web development, you might not know about CSS frameworks uh, from the past. And now, Bootstrap's been around for quite some time now, and it's been really one of the go to uh, CSS frameworks. Um, for a fair while, I st still think a lot of people still use it a fair bit, even though there's kind of new ways to approach layouts and stuff like that now. Uh, but Bootstrap was originally started by Twitter a long time ago, and it, it was kind of a way that you could bootstrap your project and get your layout and various elements ready to go, and then you can just modify them slightly or majorly depending on what you want, but it'll give you a good foundation to get things uh, going. So what what this is basically going to just run through is Bootstrap 4, which has been a release that's been waiting for years and years and years. It feels like an extremely long time. I'm not too sure how long it's really been, uh, but it definitely feels like it's been a bare minimum two or three years, I'd, I'd feel. So anyway, what I'm going to do is just go over the blog post uh, just briefly, uh, but I will link in the show notes for that if you want to get the full breakdown of what's changed since the betas of uh, Bootstrap 4 uh, up until this actual full release, uh, as well as just go over what some of the components and things are and, and what the real changes are. So reading from a quote here, uh, what they're saying is, it's literally taken us years to do it, but Bootstrap 4 has finally arrived. Words cannot begin to describe the elation the entire team and I have for this release, but I'll do my best. Thank you to everyone, especially to the team and to everyone who's contributed code in a pull request or opened an issue. Thank you. Uh, since our last beta, we've been hard at work stabilizing a few key pieces of our CSS, polishing our documentation, adding extra surprises and planning for follow-up. Uh, releases. Uh, we still have some kinks to iron out, but nothing's going to stop us from shipping a stable release. Um, so that's it. It's released. Uh, so I just want to kind of go over the, the basics here. So the getting started is very much the same. So you can install it via a gem. You can just link uh, to it via CDN. Same with all the JavaScript. Uh, and there's starter templates, etc. everything for you to go on. Uh, but there are some new example kind of templates that you can use and basically just copy and paste and drop in and then modify to suit. Uh, and those examples have been uh, fleshed out and added to quite substantially. So it's worth checking out their examples section um, just to get an idea of, of what's been added and what's changed. So, for example, they've got, you know, your pricing, your checkouts, products, dashboards, uh, blogs, um, sticky navs, grids, uh, all kinds of different things there as well, uh, off-canvas stuff, uh, floating labels, a bunch of those things there in their examples section. So it's worth checking that out if you haven't checked it out in a while and you are into Bootstrap. So first thing and the, the major thing that I'd say is the biggest change is around the grid system. Now that's what I feel most people use a, a CSS framework for is the actual grid system itself. Now, with Bootstrap, it used to use the standard uh, float system, and they've actually switched it to use Flexbox. So this is just going to future-proof uh, the, the actual framework itself, as well as providing some other possibilities when you want to do some kind of like app layouts, fancier kind of layouts. So it does that there. Now, it doesn't use CSS Grid to my knowledge, uh, so not to get confused with a actual CSS grid implementation and creating CSS grids. Uh, this is purely just to lay out your pages, uh, whether it's the whole page as a whole or various elements, sub elements within that. Uh, but it is using Flexbox there. But the uh, markup has stayed relatively the same. It hasn't really changed that much. Uh, so that's quite nice there. So if you want to migrate, there's uh, some easy ways to migrate there, which I'll get into later on. Uh, so starting off, Reboot. So Reboot is a collection of element-specific CSS changes in a single file. Uh, this is kind of like a CSS reset, uh, but as well as adding some like default styling and stuff like that. Uh, next up for the components, you know, they've got alerts, badges, breadcrumbs, buttons, button groups, card, carousel, collapse, uh, drop-downs, forms, all your input group stuff, Jumbotron, which is like their kind of like feature header. List groups, modal, navigation, pagination, popover, progress, bars, scroll spy, which is for scrolling, tooltips, and more. So that's all the base components. Uh, next up, utilities. They have utilities for borders, 
clear fix, which is again to do with some of the, the layout portion, uh, close icon, colors, display, embed, uh, the flex stuff, which is some nice um, nice section there if you want to uh, kind of modify the, the Flexbox behavior within it. It goes quite in depth there. So uh, if you're going to check out that one, take a little bit of time because there is a lot to it. Uh, image replacement, screen reader stuff, sizing, spacing, text, vertical alignment, visibility, all those kind of utilities you expect to have uh, as previous. Uh, and there is also an approach section, which when you want to extend things, uh, how you work with classes, the responsive side of things, the Z index scales, which I think they've actually done pretty well with documenting that. And that's something I think a lot of people really need to uh, invest some time into even outside of using CSS frameworks. It's just getting your Z indexes right. Um, component elements, they've got a few things there and it just generally explains how you should look at using the CSS framework to get the most out of it. Um, so it's sounding pretty good. You know, it, it doesn't seem like it's like, whoa, amazing, but this is a tool that has been tested and proven to actually allow you to get the job done with creating various different layouts and websites as a whole. And it really does work quite well. It allows you to, even if it's just a prototype, get that up and running very, very quickly. And it looks, looks quite decent. Uh, so how do you get there if you've got an existing bootstrap site? So if you've, uh, if you're just starting out or you want to put it in there, it's very easy. You just link via the CDN or install it via a gem, however you want to do. There's various different ways there. We'll work with Webpack, etc. But what if you want to migrate? So migrations have been a little bit weird, like Bootstrap 2 to Bootstrap 3 was a little bit more painful than it probably should have, but it wasn't too bad. It really just depended on your approach, which I think they've kind of uh, tackled that in the approach section there when you want to extend uh, the framework itself. So Migrating to version 4, they're saying here, Bootstrap 4 is a major rewrite of the entire project. The most notable changes are summarized below. So stable changes. Moving from beta 3 to our stable version 4 release, there are no breaking changes, but there are some notable changes. So this is really important. Um, if you've been kind of using the beta, because the beta has been pretty stable uh, from what I've heard, it's, it's a very basic update, which is nice. So... They're outlining all those, I won't really go over them because it's really going to depend on you. Um, I'll just see if they've got here. I'm just looking at everything here. It's mainly around all their classes, uh, but a lot of the classes do look fairly, well, quite close to being the same. There's just some slight uh, differences there, uh, but it looks like overall it's pretty straightforward to update. So if you're using Bootstrap 3, I don't think you have too much of a problem. It might be a bit of find and replace, uh, but for the most part, from what I see most people using, it's really going to be a drop-in replacement and just some very, very minor changes. You may need to look at restyling the styles if you've styled them outside of using how they recommend to use it with uh, like if you're using Bootstrap, you really should be using SAS and it allows you to theme it a lot better. Uh, but if you haven't done that, you might just have to go over and adjust some styling, remove some, add some, etc. But it looks pretty straightforward, which is nice to see. Now, I'd love to know your thoughts. Have you been using Bootstrap in the past? If so, is this making you relook at Bootstrap? Uh, have you moved to something else? What are you preferring over Bootstrap these days? And why are you not, not looking at Bootstrap? Really love to know all those kind of things. So send through a tweet to at CodyCatchUp on Twitter. You can leave a uh, comment on CodyCatchUp.com for this episode. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please give a like if you're enjoying the video, uh, as well as a subscribe if you want to see more of these uh, uh, videos, whether they're in audio format or video format, uh, because some of the podcasts are still going up as purely video, and then some are still going up as as just purely audio. I'm just slowly transitioning these videos uh, or this content out to be all video based. Uh, so if you are listening to this in iTunes, you want to get some more context in things where I'm showing the screen and talking things through, uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, which you can find at youtube.com slash code catch up. Uh, but other than that, that's all I really got and I'll catch you the next one. Bye.